Okay, guys, basically the way it's going to work this week, uh, we'll start this lecture today, finish it uh, on Wednesday, uh, go ahead and have our uh, review on Friday. Um, your final course will be on Monday. Uh, I think it starts whenever this class time starts and it'll be closed. An hour after it, it's going to be just like your midterm, uh, what, 20 questions? Or do I have to give you all 25? He gave us 23 last time for 20 points and 3 extra credit. Okay, so it'll be 20 questions, multiple choice, 60 minutes to do it. You all ought to have no difficulty whatsoever. You don't have to know anything you had new, needed to know for the midterm for it. So it's like the midterm part two. Yeah. For the midterm, we really did it was you opened it at 10 o'clock and or maybe 11 o'clock, and then close at 11 o'clock that night and just give us a one hour timer. Are you doing it that way or is it during class time? Uh, it's supposed to be during class time. Okay. So I don't know if I'm, you know, maybe because it's internet, I might have that freedom. All Probably I know possible. is they're pretty meh, meh, uh, by the book on that. So. That's what the old professor was just like, we're giving you four days. Like, <laughs> you uh, that would be wonderful. But the good thing is, is that you get uh, this one out of the way quick to your first final uh, during finals week, or you might have a class that's earlier than this. But that means you don't have to worry about this class. Um, make sure to do the uh, class survey uh, that's uh, online on Canvas and uh, uh, Put in a criticism on ratemyprofessor.com. Uh, hopefully, you will found this class good. It'll be interesting because it's the first time I've taught Texas history, even though I've studied it for goodness knows how long. Heck, I've lived it. All right, so y'all ready to get going? This lecture is Complex Times, uh, Texas basically from 1980 to 1994. And just as our book starts out, we start out with the Branch Davidians. Now, did any of you guys know anything about the Branch Davidians? All right, well, basically, this was a guy, the Branch Davidians were a subset of the uh, Seventh-day Adventists, I believe. And uh, this is about a guy down in Waco who basically was amassing a lot of guns. The uh, ATF... <clears throat> and it's during this time that we really do kind of see a rise of uh, religion and politics. And we'll get to that in just a nation. Okay, Texas and national politics. Well, by 1980, George Bush, the senior, was very popular in Texas. Uh, but basically, the Republican National Committee chose Ronald Reagan, a California governor and former actor, as the candidate. The guy he was running against was a Georgian governor, and also he was a nuclear physicist on a Navy submarine, uh, Jimmy Carter. But underneath Carter, we had an incredibly sluggish economy with inflation at like 14%. Not only that, but we had the Iran hostage crisis that was going on, where members of the American embassy in Tehran had been held captive for more than a year. But Ronald Reagan, known as the uh, great communicator, was able to win over a lot of people. He said a recession is when your neighbor loses his job. A depression is when you lose yours. And recovery is when Jimmy Carter loses his. Basically gave people a lot of hope. And what was known as the Sagebrush Rebellion, because a lot of people, especially in the Western states, were chafing against 
the regulations that have been laid down on banks. And he promised that he would remove this such regulation. Meanwhile, in Texas, in Texas, we are going through an incredible oil bust. The price of oil goes down, and then real estate went down as well. And because of that, especially here in Dallas, you had a lot of savings and loans that failed like the 10 largest commercial banks here in Texas all failed. In five years, from 1985 to 1990, more than 455 banks failed with 200 thrift banks. Well, what's going to happen to the people that have their money in those banks? Well, thanks to a program that had been put in by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, we have the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, that basically guaranteed up to $100,000 in an account. Today it's a little bit more. So just the bailout of the thrift banks alone cost taxpayers $44 billion. Meanwhile, what about the deregulation that was promised? Well, here in Texas, we had a lot of deregulation. Especially there was a loosening of the Wright Amendment. Southwest Airlines took advantage of this to expand to 20 more markets. With the deregulation of trucking, Texas-based uh, central freight lines grew Sadly, however, instead of helping out the little guy, the deregulation of our railroads actually worked for the big corporations in that and squeezed out the little guy. Meanwhile, religion, the melding of religion and politics was very, very evident during this era. Here in Dallas, we had W.A. Criswell at First Baptist Church downtown. Who in conjunction with like Jerry Falwell, the guy who started Liberty University, a uh, big time Protestant. He started the Moral Majority. It's also been called like the Christian right, I mean the religious right. 
or the Christian coalition basically they believe that as a group Christians should get out restrict abortion access to pornography and homosexuality indeed uh, Jerry Falwell said of homosexuality said of AIDS that AIDS wasn't a punishment on homosexuals rather it was a punishment on society that accepted homosexuals and basically these guys would take no hesitation utilizing direct mail and televangelists to reach an audience of up to 25 million here you see the church blessed be the voters Here's the Republican Party, because basically they would support Republican ideals. Hand out pamphlets to the congregants. These are the candidates you should vote for. These are the candidates you shouldn't. Indeed, my uh, grandfather, who lived out in uh, near Tyler, Texas, he'd go and he'd take those pamphlets out to the churches near him. Now, of course, their devotion to this group, the moral majority, was actually pretty big. Despite the fact that you had uh, exposés happen, like Jim Baker, who helped found the PTL show, or the Praise the Lord show, was married to Tammy Faye Baker. Well, it was revealed that he was having an affair and giving hush money to Jessica Horn which of course caused him to lose his position, divorce his wife. Here in Dallas you also had, oh, I can't think of his name now, Word of Faith Cathedral. <laughs> Indeed the pastor of the church that I went to, he also had an external affair that caused his eviction from that church. Robert Tilton. Robert Tilton wasn't my preacher. He was the guy who was at Word of Faith. But now they basically raised the land that that church was on and it's the hockey center uh, out in Farmer's Branch slash Carrollton. Well, needless to say, uh, George Bush took over after uh, Reagan had run his two terms. By the time we get to 1992, you have Bush against Bill Clinton. And it looked like Bush was going to win. But then we have a third candidate come in. Ross Perot, the guy who built the EDS, Electronic Data Systems. Also, he has that museum because he donated all that money to it. Also, he tried to do something to solve the hostage crisis under Jimmy Carter where they sent in like three helicopters and special agent teams. Well, one of the helicopters had to return. Uh, the other two helicopters, one of them was uh, destroyed in a dust storm. Thing totally fell apart. But he came in and basically said that uh, with his business sense, he would get the economy back on the run. And here in Texas, uh, Ross Perot actually got 22% of the vote. Bill Clinton got 37% of the vote. And Bush got 40% of the vote. The only problem is, nationally, Ross Perot took votes away from, not Clinton, but from Bush. That's why, if you remember, back in 2016, a lot of people were worried that uh, Ralph Nader or the Bernie Sanders might run as a third-party candidate. Because if Bernie Sanders ran as a third-party candidate, and we had basically uh, Clinton and Bush, 
Who would uh, Bernie Sanders have taken votes away from? Do you think a lot of people that voted for Trump would have voted for Bernie Sanders? Interesting. I mean, a lot of some people who were so irritated that Bernie Sanders didn't get the nomination intentionally voted for Trump in the intent that the party would be forced to pick Bernie Sanders next time. Wow. So needless to say, was the Republican Party divided? Clinton wins nationally. Just like this last time, even though Trump won the um, state of Texas, Biden was declared the national winner. We also had uh, Lloyd Benson underneath Bill Clinton, who was pro promoted up to be Secretary of the Treasury. And by the way, Lloyd Benson wasn't a crazy guy. I just thought that was a funny picture of him. Uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson, he basically left the Senate to become Secretary of the Treasury. He was a Democrat. Republican K. Bailey Hutchinson uh, won his seat. And we had Henry Cisneros, another Democrat, uh, of San Antonio, was promoted up to the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Oh, just as uh, Lloyd Benson had ser served many years for Texas, so did uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson. Well, then we have Will, uh, William Clemens against Mark uh, White. I know you're saying, what was uh, Bill Clemens doing against the uh, drum, the guitarist for, oh my gosh, I forgot what their name is. One rock band. And basically, the Democrats were very motivated to get white elected, especially teachers, with a prom promise of comprehensive educational reform. But like people always say, be careful what you wish for. Why? Because you just might get it. House Bill 72 was passed here in Texas that established educational standards for students and teachers. Now, not a lot of teachers, especially the teachers unions, were crazy about that. So how are you going to placate them? Well, they uh, gave them broad salary increases. This is when we have the no pass, no play, where the student is failing a six week period. They're prohibited from extracurricular activities. Now, a lot of these changes were very controversial. As you can guess, uh, bureaucratic systems don't like a lot of change. 
especially quick change. Can everybody get that? Do I need to go back? Go back to this bit. In 1986, White runs again, the Democrat versus Clements, the Republican. Clements wins. And this is when we get into the controversy of how are we going to support Texas education. Now, ever since the Wayback Machine here in Texas, property taxes have always been used to support local schools. Now, what's the problem with that, though? If areas have different property taxes because of different values. So, usually the higher property taxes get what? More funding for schools? Yeah, better schools. Highland Park, they're going to have better education. Plano, going to have better education than Prosper. Indeed, this case was, there was a case as early as 1971 where they tried to say that this was a case of inequality. Went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Only was found constitutional by one vote. Otherwise, we would have had to have dealt with it back then. Then jump up to 86, we have Edward uh, Edgewood ISD versus Kirby. Kirby was the head of the Texas Department of Education. Basically, they said that education was a uh, basic right, regardless of where you lived or how much your parents made. Everybody needed to have equality in education. So this is basically where they got the Robin Hood pro plan, where basically the uh, Texas government takes from the richer districts to turn around and give to the poorer districts. I mean, they have five basic ways to choose from, but that's pretty much what it does. Now, what's funny is uh, some of the richer districts, like Holland Park, they just got a brand new football stadium, like about four years ago, I think it is. And how did they make this huge payment? Because Robin Hood takes a lot of Robin Hood takes a lot of money out of Plano. How you know how they were able to afford this huge new football stadium? Yeah, one of their alumni just donated it. Here you go. Um, by the way, guys, uh, Robin Hood has been ruled unconstitutional as well. And it's up for the uh, state legislature to do something about it. And as you can guess, they don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Then Clements has more problems. The low, now, why would Texas be hurt by low oil prices? A significant amount of our tax income is based off of what we're building. Yeah. And guys, something no one is paying attention to now, what do you think the cost of all these shutdowns economically are going to do? Because the counties aren't making the tax money, states aren't making the tax money, cities aren't making the tax money, yet 
They still have to pay cops. They still have to pay policemen. They still have to pay college per fund. Oh, anyway. But guys, uh, also SMU football scandal breaks out where he had basically given money to the football program at SMU. They'd have scholarships where players would get jobs, where it would just be a handover of cash. When all this is revealed, uh, the death penalty was passed on SMU, meaning they couldn't play football for a year. Ready for the next one? Ann Richards in early 1990s state politics. Well, for the governorship, In 1990, it was supposed to be Jim Maddox, a Republican, versus Ann Richards. Except a West Texas cattleman by the name of Clayton Williams, who was a Republican, was running against Maddox. He spent more than $8 million of his own money to run for governor. And during the election, while well, he's campaigning for the election, uh, he equated rape to bad weather here in Texas. As long as it's inevitable, you might as well lie back and enjoy it. The blowback against this was huge. Not only that, but he also admitted to the fact that he had used a prostitute while he was in college at A&M. And he had paid no income taxes in 1986. Which led to a decisive victory for Ann Richards. Who, by the way, was a, an incredible personality. Basically, uh, Texas, because we weren't making the money from oil anymore, they had to figure out how to make up to the shortfall. So this is when we got the state lottery passed here in Texas. And even though they told everybody, oh, well, the reason why we're doing this is to support Texas education, guys, the money for the lottery doesn't go directly to education. It goes into the general fund where money for all of Texas goes. So if ever you see a lottery ticket like, it's for the U.S. veterans, it's for the veterans, don't believe it. Oh, this is for education. Don't believe it. In a roundabout way it is, but it's going into the general fund. Now, Ann Richards, though, did do some great things, like in our uh, prison system, here in Texas, she started substance abuse programs for prisoners. She supported passage of the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. That tomorrow I'll show little clips of Roger and me to show some of the ramifications of that. Even though here in Texas it's been incredible. She championed more diversity in government. The more women and minorities should be included. And it was underneath her position that Leroy Young and Wendy Wakeman were appointed. Basically this is the first black 
and the first female, Texas Ranger. Oh, and by the way, guys, just so you know, uh, three weeks after that thing happened in Waco with David Koresh, the Texas Rangers were sent out to West Texas. There was a polygamous cult out there that basically they wanted to break up. Basically, the Texas Rangers went out there, shut off all the power, electricity, all that stuff, sat it out, three weeks, guys surrendered, no problem. All right, everybody got it? Next class, we'll go ahead and be finishing out this lecture as well as, that's what? All right, stay healthy, stay strong. Remind those